Kramer's husband, Kenneth, had a massive heart attack on a Tuesday afternoon in May. He was in the stands at a small dog track west of Miami. His dog came in first. Kenneth, however, didn't make it. For a long time, Dottie couldn't sleep at night. She wandered around her apartment, raking over the past and avoiding any thought of the future. But the future comes whether you avoid it or not. In her years as an actress, Dottie had learned important lessons. Make a dramatic entrance, cry on cue, and when the show's over, put away your props and costumes and move on. So Dottie decided to clean out Kenneth's closets and drawers and donate as much as possible to charity. At the back of Kenneth's closet, Dottie found an old wooden box. She immediately regretted opening it up. Mm. Hello, Mrs. Kramer. Look at you. Pretty as a picture. What? What is it? Oh, the paint on my face. Well, I was working up until the moment we left, and Barbara was so sweet to go out and find these boxes for us to use. Aren't you going to invite us in? <laughs> sure. Come in. Oh, so, Dottie invited her floor. old friend Tilly over to help pack uh, up Dottie, Kenneth's things. Aren't you going? Don't you want to start packing now? Oh, uh, not yet. Okay. <sighs> well, I was cleaning out Kenneth's closet, and I found this. Oh, what a lovely old box. Mm. What's inside, precious keepsakes? Mm -hmm. Well... A loaded gun, a bag of cocaine, a bag of pills, $5,000, oh, another bag of pills, condoms, a cock ring. Oh, and Polaroids. Well, don't worry. Neither of you are in the pictures. Oh, my. I guess Kenneth's sobriety wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. Me, rest in peace. Tilly, if you were to paint this, how would you do it? What? If you were to do a still life of these precious keepsakes, how would you paint them? I have no idea. Well, hypothetically. I don't know. Well, just imagine. I don't know. Well, humor me. I have no idea. No. Well, try. <sighs> Fine. <sighs> Impressionistically? With shadows running over it? No. Maybe surreal. Like Salvador Dali. Like a dream? Like a dream. Hmm. But there's something missing. What's missing, Tilly? Oh, Daddy, honey, I have no idea what's missing. Oh, no, honey. I think it's time for me to go. Oh, no. Stay a while. We're just getting started. Anyone have a drink? I'll have a scotch. Neat. How would you paint the picture now, Tilly? Hmm? Cat got your tongue? Dottie, honey, could we just talk about this, please? No! Oh, Barbara, 
Would you please read the letter out loud for us? Oh, I don't know, Mrs. Kramer. I insist. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe I should read it. Dear Kenneth, I know I shouldn't be writing to you. I know that it's ridiculous, but I can't stop thinking about Detroit and the view from the 34th floor of the Radisson Hotel and the tiny people on Michigan Avenue below. Well, to be honest, I can't stop thinking about you sitting on the arm of the green leather chair just in front of the window, the light bouncing off of your hair your hair that kept falling across your forehead and into your eye as you made me laugh like a little girl at the circus. Your beautiful soft hair that kept falling into my eyes all night long, safe on the 34th floor. Thank you from the bottom of my soul, love, Till. Till? Oh. Oh, love, Till. I'll have the letter now, please, Barbara. You broke the rule. What rule? The rule that said we never sleep with each other's husbands. That I could never sleep with Patrick, though God knows almost every time he got drunk, he made a pass at me, which was often. I know that. If I had a dime for every time he threw himself at me. I know. Disgusting. Uh, did you happen to look at the date on that letter? 1978. 1978. That's the year I couldn't get out of bed, remember? <laughs> every morning I'd wake up and Patrick would say, do you want me to do it? And I said, oh, no, don't you dare. I couldn't face her room for a year. I couldn't go and clean out her room. Do you know what it took for me to come here today to help clean out his things? Do you have any idea what it brought up? <sighs> yes, Dottie. Yes, Kenneth took me away for a weekend, and he made me feel safe in that hotel room. I lived on that for the next year. I think I painted that a dozen times at least. That was the hotel room? Yes. I don't know how Kenneth knew how to help me, but he did. Maybe because he knew the darkness, too. But he knew how to fool it into staying in that secret box. This stuff will have too. No, 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 don't do that. You might hit somebody. Well, I don't want it here. Uh, no, I can help you with that. First, let's put everything back in the box. Oh. Is that all right, Mrs. Kramer? Yes, do what you want. Take it all in, except for the money. Give me the money. <laughs> ah! Oh, my Are God. My Are you hurt? Are you hurt? No, no. Are you hurt? No, no. Are you hurt? Oh, hurt? my heart. Oh, would you want your call? An ambulance? Oh, I know, I know, oh, I know, Barbara. God. Easy, easy, easy. Oh, is anyone got a call? Barbara quit her job as Tilly's housekeeper and opened a karaoke bar in Sarasota, Florida. The condo committee fined Dottie $150 for littering in the pool. She never paid it, and now there's a lien on her condo. Dottie and Tilly never spoke about the box, the gunshot, or Kenneth ever again.